Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. Three episodes in three days, I must be absolutely mad. No, I've just got an incredibly large backlog of footage that I need to be getting through. And what better way to do that than releasing constantly all of the time. Anyway, in this episode, what we are going to be doing is setting up Armstrong 1, our first ever surface base on that rather small rocky moon in the road system. So... We are going to be using the totally reliable assembly platform to build all of the components that we are going to be sending over. This is now the first of those, and this is going to be the habitation module that our Kerbals are going to stay in on their duration on the surface of Armstrong. Basically, this base that we are sending down is going to mine uraninite and ore, and we are going to turn that into enriched uranium and liquid fuel and oxidizer. Then, in the coming episodes, what I'm going to do is set up a space station around Armstrong that we are going to turn that enriched uranium into fission pellets, which we will be able to use for our pulsed fission drive, which is the new tasty far future technology that we have unlocked recently. It's going to be really, really, really exciting to use that because its specific impulse is 9,500 meters per second or 9,500 seconds even in vacuum. It's a very, very good engine and it's thrust. It's all right. It's we're going to be burning a long time with it, but just that specific impulse is crazy. I know someone said about nuclear salt water engines on a comment in I think it wasn't the last video I did, but the video before and I will be getting onto those. However, they are a little bit further on down the technology tree. But this base will be able to pretty much produce nuclear salt water as well. All that I need in addition to enriched uranium is going to be ore. And I'm gonna to have to figure out a way of getting ore up to the space station once we get that all put together, which I have already done because as I have said, I've got an incredibly large backlog of footage and yes, the space station is all built and the, the new interplanetary ship is built as well. It's, it's very cool and that's kind of one another reason why I want to get these out as quickly as possible because the exciting stuff is all coming. Anyway, yes, this is going to be called the Armstrong One base. I'm not really happy with that at the moment. I'm, I think it's, it's just kind of like a placeholder name for the first base that we set down on Armstrong. We are going to be landing where we didn't scout out in the previous episode, as I did mention in that episode. Basically, all of the uraninite and all of the ore is in the highlands. We landed in the gorges. It was a bit of a bit of a showcase for the people back at home, just to show that we were actually doing something. It wasn't really anything important. So this is a little bit of a tricky base, or a tricky place to land a base. Lots of rhyming there, yes, because obviously nothing is flat in the highlands. So it's a, it's a, it took me a little while, did a little bit of hovering to try and actually land somewhere flat. And I didn't even land anywhere flat. But what we did was, well, we did land somewhere and it should be okay. We used the US size ground tether to firmly anchor us to the ground so we don't go rolling down the hill. And then we detached that sort of little sky crane device that we used to bring that base down. Now what we're going to be working on is the actual enriched uranium processing facility of the base. And as we can see, with the... Trap! I almost forgot the name of that there. Yeah, something went wrong. We ran out of power, and that meant that we were no longer producing anything using extraplanetary launch pads. Now, I don't know why this ran out of power, and this was a bug that I was encountering quite often. So, the solar panels are being blocked by Destiny, apparently. Destiny is that huge ginormous star that we are orbiting, that Road is orbiting. It's the bigger one of the two. Fate and Destiny are the two stars. How can our solar panels being, be, be being blocked by the star that should be providing us power? I don't know if the solar panels need to have a clear line of sight to the Temper System Barry Center, which is the little thing in between the two stars, which is how the game actually calculates the binary star system. But I, I do know as well, yeah, I, I don't know if that's why this is happening, but one thing that I do know is there is a mod that means you can select which stars your solar panels are aligned to, and apparently I don't have that because I looked on my solar panels and I can't do that, and I can't for the life of me recall what mod that is that does that. If anyone knows, could you please let me know, because I would quite like to align my solar panels to Destiny and stop all of this rubbish happening with it blocking our solar panels. It's rather irritating. 
because things run out of electric charge when they shouldn't. Obviously on Trap we do have nuclear reactors as well, but unfortunately I did run out of enriched uranium in the actual reactor in that case, which is just why we lost our power. But we were able to gain some power, and we were able to transfer some enriched uranium to where it should be, and we were able to start that base up again, and obviously we have now made our way over to Armstrong with the nuclear processing facility for the Armstrong Base 1. I don't know if I know, I don't, I don't think I said it, but yeah, Armstrong Base 1, I'm going to go over it, yes, no, if you've got a name for this base, please do let me know in the comments, because I, I don't want to leave it as Armstrong Base 1, it is a placeholder name. But anyway, we are more than capable of getting over to Armstrong, and we can see we are only one kilometre, or thereabouts, away now from the first part of that base. So, the Delta V margins in this part of the mission were a lot tighter than when we first sent down that first piece. We've only got about 80 meters per second left by the time we touched down, and this was in a bit of an inconvenient position. I decided that actually, you know what, no, we are going to turn it round, and we only have about 15 meters per second of Delta V remaining in that vessel once we get that down. It, it was very tight. Now what we're going to do, though, is send over our first crew. So we are going to pick up Tuck Kerman, Herman Kernan, Small Kerman, and Henry Kerman, and they are going to make their way over to Armstrong on the new reusable version of the Manta. I'm, I'm absolutely in love with this vehicle now. The way it flies when it reaches back to Armstrong, oh, not, not Armstrong, the way it flies when it reaches back to road, and just the fact that everything is completely reusable. It's wonderful. I'm probably going to be using this an awful lot. And I'm going to be using it when we go into planetary as well. The interplanetary design that I have put together does utilize one of these as kind of a crew transfer vehicle from the interplanetary ship to the, the different destinations that we may want to land crew on, but that's for a future video. No, we're not going to talk about that now. We are going to get the multi-vessel tracking screen back up again. I'm still absolutely in love with this new design. It looks amazing. Thank you so much for coming up with this. Anyway, yeah, things are good with this booster landing. To be honest, this is much easier to land than any other booster that I have done so far in this series, which is absolutely fantastic. We didn't have the problem with the air brakes floating through the tank this time either, so it was a much nicer landing, and I wasn't scaring myself when we were coming down there because, well, yeah, with those flaps flapping around, who knows the air resistance that they were creating for us. It wasn't very good in the slightest. But we are able to bring that safely down, and we are able to get to orbit with the Manta. And obviously now that we're in orbit, well, it's just a simple case of plotting out our maneuver node to go over to Armstrong and land somewhere near that base. I really don't like the fact that it's in the Highlands, but unfortunately the Highlands are the only place where the ore and the Uraninite is. It's a really weird word to say that, Uraninite? Try saying that five times fast. Yeah, because even landing one of these Mantas, obviously it's a, a plane kind of vehicle, space plane. So it's a bit weird landing these on a vacuum moon anyway. But when you're in the Highlands, it's, it's really annoying. And I don't have any ground tethers on this. So I have to put the brakes on on the wheels and just hope that it stays in position. And when I was using this and when I kept going back to this base to check on my enriched uranium production, every time that I went, well, the Manta did shift a bit because the brakes aren't quite enough to stick to the surface of Armstrong. And another kind of, we well, Armstrong's very small, so the gravity is very small. So things kind of just end up floating off anyway. It's Probably not the best of places to go if you are using a space plane to transfer crew, but like I said before, I'm absolutely in love with this vehicle. I'm going to be using this an awful lot until basically I get better engines and maybe we'll think about doing some sort of SSTO design in the future and just completely cut out that first stage. Although the fact that everything is reusable at the moment does mean that, I mean, we're, we're reusing everything anyway. But here we are, coming down, Tuck Gurman is the pilot and he does a masterful job of bringing us safely down in these highlands. What we're going to do is we're going to flip it around though and do a quick little drive over to the base. So our Kerbals don't really have to stretch their legs too much, no, we're going to try and get them as close as possible. I don't have the follow me mod on this save, which is the mod where you can get Kerbals all walking after each other, so I do have to transfer them over one at a time. So the closer I am, 
the better it is for my mental stability. Anyway, now that we've brought some crew down, we can attach the two parts together using the USI flexi tubes. When I was designing this base on a live stream, I couldn't for the life of me figure out why that wasn't working. Turns out you need KAS and KIS in order for that part to be functional. So I have since downloaded those two mods and added it to the save. I didn't realize that you needed those and I thought, well, 1.12.3 kind of has those built in anyway. Or this, I don't even think this is 1.12.3, it might be 1.12.2. Yeah, I thought, well, it's got those built in, we're not gonna need to get those mods, but yes, no, it turns out you actually do. Anyway, what I'm doing now is checking our enriched uranium processing unit, the Whirlyjig nuclear reprocessor, and my god is it slow. It's going to take us an awful, awful long time to produce any enriched uranium. Basically, I don't know if it's in between this episode and the next one, but I spent a long time waiting for us to fill up a little transfer vehicle that will take the enriched uranium from the surface of Armstrong to the space station that we will be putting together. And it took about 350 days in order for us to fill up a minuscule amount, not even enough to fill up two containers for fission pellets. It's going to take a really long time. There is a better version of it with USI that I'm going to unlock later on. And I think when I set up a more permanent presence on the surface of Armstrong, that is definitely what we are going to be using rather than this. I think I will leave this base just as a miner. And what we will do is we'll use the USI systems to transfer all of the uraninite over to a more central base, a bigger base that has much better processing facilities. But that will be it for this episode. All that remains to do is grab the Kerbals, move them over, into their new habitat have a bit of a look at the local vicinity because it is very pretty but thank you for watching i hope you have enjoyed this episode if you have why not drop us a like if you've really enjoyed it and want to continue with the content on my channel please do consider subscribing i have been karnasa and i will see you later